Welcome commanders to this Elite Dangerous Mining Guide, where we will be mining with the Asp Explorer on the cheap. You can get in this ship and get it all set up for core mining for around 15 million. The system I'm in will be linked in the description. We'll be mining in a double Muscovite hotspot. Here is the build I'm using for the Asp Explorer while we do the core mining in Elite Dangerous. This is a very cheap build that's going to make you a whole boat pile of space cheddar. So the name of the game is finding core asteroids as fast as you possibly can. The way to do that is to get above the asteroid field, get your ship kind of maxed out on speed above the asteroids so you won't hit them. Then use your pulse wave analyzer while outside of your ship and then just look around for core asteroids. Now you will definitely be able to tell what a core asteroid is when you see it and you should be seeing one here shortly. Although a lot of cores are very bright, that one down there, that potato shape right there, along with those black lines and the brightness is the telltale giveaway sign of finding a core asteroid. If you are doing deep core mining in a metal rich or rocky ring, well that right there is the exact shape and brightness you're looking for. Every single one of these cores will look exactly like this. But if you want to be sure it's a core, just look for fractures on the surface. I see quite a few of them before my prospector went off. Well, I get all this stuff set up, let's talk about my fire groups. Now, for my fire group one, I have my pulse wave analyzer on one, prospector on two. Fire group two is dedicated to core cracking, so I'll have my seismic charge launcher on one. My abrasion blasters are on two, as well as my collector limpets. What I generally like to do is find an average or low strength fissure and then fire a full charge into it with the seismic charge launcher, then immediately find another one and just kind of tap it. That one I put a little bit too much power in. So we will need to disarm that charge and then find another fissure to charge back up because if we blow up the rock as is, we're going to lose a lot of material. Now it's totally okay to screw up and overcharge on these things sometimes because you're going to be a noob and it's going to happen. What's not okay is panicking because this is on a time crunch. Here is the telltale signs of space panicking. At this point I have already had to disarm two of these charges. Now I'm going to start running out of fissures if I keep choking. And this is an average strength charge, so if I do anything that's over about half, it's going to be too much. And of course I didn't do enough, so let's find another fissure. This one I'm just going to tap it. What I really need to find is a low strength fissure. There we go. Just a tap on the trigger will be just enough to get that thing detonated just right. Now it's really important that at this stage you stop French kissing the rock after you hit the detonate now button and get the heck away from it. You need to be at least a kilometer away or you could get caught up in the explosion and space die and we don't want that to happen to you. Now the one thing I absolutely love about core mining other than the rush of finding a core asteroid is the explosion itself. It is absolutely epic. After the epic explosion, just slowly approach the asteroid as it breaks apart and use your abrasion blaster to break the surface deposits right off the rock. All your collectors will cluck everything up as long as you remember to open your cargo scoop. The other thing that I should note with the Asp Explorer with derated thrusters, although I do have the footage here sped up, maneuverability is very slow and sluggish, so make sure that you don't bounce off these rocks or you're going to knock your shields down and that is no good. Here we are flying up on another core asteroid. Now notice the potatoey slash like blunted arrow shape with the black lines and notice how bright it is from a very far distance. This is definitely going to be a core asteroid. The other cool thing that will enhance that black grid light pattern as you approach these asteroids is to make sure that you have your night vision turned on. The other thing that you'll notice that only cores do is the black grid-like pattern will almost always enhance into a very dark black green or as well as a green and red. The other thing that will always give a core away are fissures. Same method as before, this time with a whole heck of a lot less choking. We're just going to do this with two charges because we're actually a pro. Well, maybe three charges. There we go. It's perfect. Now let's get a kilometer away so we can witness the glorious explosion. Ah, man, that never gets old, seriously. Just don't be too close to that explosion, Commander, or it'll be the last thing you see. And you can't make any money when you're space dead, so yeah, let's get on with it. The awesome thing about the Asp Explorer, well, you're not going to be in the field very long. Once you start using the trick that I showed you on how to find core asteroids really quickly, 
The thing is, is it only takes four to five of these rocks to fill up your cargo hold. And a cargo hold is worth a half decent amount of space cheddar, commanders. Like, it's really good early game money. A little less than two minutes later, I'm getting ready to set up for using my pulse wave analyzer outside of the ship. I got my course nice and set. I'm not going to hit any rocks. Now let's get into third person and start scanning and see if we can find anything. Now I thought I saw this rock just on the outside of the cloud because it was really bright, really far away. Let's see if it highlights any black lines. That is most definitely the space pepper right there. That's what we're looking for. That is going to be a core asteroid. Seriously, notice the shape here. All these core asteroids in these rocky or metal rich rings are going to look just like this. It's kind of like a potato. One side's bigger than the other, kind of like a blunted arrowhead almost. You can also see from a distance multiple fissures on the surface, and I can't stress this enough, only core asteroids have fissures. The other thing I want to point out, although we are in a muscovite hotspot, you're going to find all kinds of different cores out here. Muscovite is going to be the one that pays the most. On fleet carriers, you can sell it for 750k per ton. Generally, if you go to the highest price at a space station, it's going to pay over a million a ton, or the high 900,000s. All right, time to witness the glorious explosion because I love this part. <sighs> now you've seen me collect all this stuff up a whole bunch, so let's go right back into finding core asteroids, what they look like, as well as some that are possibly fakers that look very similar. All right, so I just finished collecting up all that muscovite. That one there to the left, although I have seen it slightly brighter, does confuse me sometimes because it has that arrowhead shape. Be aware. If you don't see the black lines, the black grid patterns, it's not going to be it. Time to get the core set just above the asteroids once again, because I have done this in the middle and sometimes it gets scary when I almost smash into rocks. But this next one we're going to find, we're again going to find it very quickly. Now this method that I used to find core asteroids quickly was kind of discovered on accident, you know, like I'm a YouTuber and I like to do those outside perspectives of my ship or my dude sitting in a chair. Well, one day I had my pulse wave analyzer attached to my mining lasers and it went off and I was in third person and looking around and boy oh boy did that trigger a great idea. I'm not quite sure if FDev would consider this an exploit. I mean, I doubt it, but I can tell you what, it definitely helps you find poor asteroids much faster. Like, much faster. Of course, that's not going to help you at all to stop overcharging the Daggon fissures all the time with your seismic charge launcher, choking like Commander Hawks is doing right now, but we still get the job done. Let's watch another glorious explosion and let the shape of this rock sink in, at least the shape of it before it all breaks apart and spreads out all over space. Discarfed up all that core asteroid material, let's see if we can find ourselves another core asteroid and get the heck on out of here. Now that looks very promising, I just think that I'm looking at it from a wrong angle. Oh yeah, that's definitely a core asteroid. As we approach our final rock, pay special attention to how the black grid light patterns keep highlighting and enhancing. Eventually they're going to turn dark green black. That always happens with a core asteroid and it generally flashes yellow and red after. Once you get your cargo and your refinery completely filled up with precious core mining materials, you are going to be faced with a decision commander. Either sell on a fleet carrier or fly all over the place and try to sell it at the main space stations for the best price. If you do want to sell for full price, you're going to want to get familiar with the miner's tool. It shows you exactly where all the valuable core and laser mine materials can be found in what system as well as which system buys it for the very highest price. The main thing you want to pay attention to is the price obviously, but how much demand is there going to be for that exact item and Muscovite always seems to have the very best demand as well as the best prices. If you're trying to work up to your next really good ship, I highly recommend that you go for the Python at this stage. You're going to need to do at least two core mining trips to do that. Now, it doesn't matter if you go for the big mega bucks and go to the space stations and sell for full price or decide to sell on a fleet carrier, it's still going to take you two trips. So if you're just trying to get in a better ship like the Python, I highly recommend that you just sell on a fleet carrier in the exact same system you mined in because overall you're going to be able to get right back out there and mine, which is a lot faster than trying to track down multiple locations to sell for the best price. Your main goal for early game is to get yourself to a really good ship, and I tell you what, the Python is a really good ship that can do what I just showed you, but about a bazillion times better, as long as everything else in the game, well, 
except for exploration. All right, time for the money shot. I hopped onto a random fleet carrier here to see what I can sell my stuff for. I picked the I buy Muscovite for 750k. The unfortunate thing though, they are not paying enough for my Monazite. I saw other fleet carriers buying it for 500k, but since I'm not strapped for cash, I'll just go ahead and give my profits to this guy. Oh well. And just like that, you can be done selling all of your precious minerals in one location to a fleet carrier, even though I'm kind of getting in the butt here, the space butt by the way, I'm still making a lot of money really quickly. No matter what you do, either selling at a fleet carrier or at a space station, don't forget to buy your daggone limpets because literally making this video right after selling everything, I took off and then had to reland and film me buying limpets because I didn't have any. If there's one thing you can count on in Elite Dangerous, you can count on Hawks Gaming for getting to buy his damn limpets. It's also extremely important to remember to flush all the leftovers out of your refinery or the space pirates will kick you in the face. There you have it, Commanders. This was my Elite Dangerous mining guide for core mining on a budget for beginners. I hope this helped your gameplay, and if it did, please consider smashing that like button and giving me a subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.